What's up guys, Alicon Pierre here, and today I want to talk about exercise variation in your training. And I want to discuss a little talked about reason for why you should consider incorporating more variation into your training than many of you probably are, right? More exercise variation, more different varieties. Keep things spiced up, keep your training interesting, right? And I'm not going to discuss the when here today. I don't want to talk about when you should consider doing this or what sorts of indicators may act as a catalyst for you to consider doing so, to consider changing things up or adding different variations in, into your training. But instead, I really just want to talk about th this, this rarely discussed reason for why you should consider doing this. And now before we get too far into it, I do want to preface this video with a quick qualifier. So just to be very clear here, when I say exercise variation, I'm not talking about the idea of, say, taking your squats out of the program altogether and replacing them with something like leg extensions or anything silly like that. What I am referring to here is the concept of taking your back squats and then maybe doing front squats instead or doing pause squats instead or pause front squats or zombie squats or pause zombie squats or zombie squats to a box or just front squats to a box or SSB squats or pause SSB squats or SSB squats to a box, you know, anything like that. Even heavy unilateral training can potentially replace squat training at certain times. Belt squats can replace it in short periods of time, that kind of thing. If we were talking about horizontal pressing, maybe you would replace the bench press with a long pause bench press, right? Three to five seconds with the bar on your chest makes a world of difference compared to touch and go or compared to a brief pause. That's a variation in and of itself. It's a dr pretty drastic change, actually. Maybe you could do heavy dips instead of bench pressing for a time, or you could alter the grip width instead of going to a standard grip. You could do a close grip, or you could press floor pressing, pressing off the floor. You could try Larson pressing with your feet in the air so there's no leg drive. You could switch to a specialty bar like a buffalo bar to increase the range of motion, or you could even try weighted push-ups, right? Something like that. I have a weight vest. lets me go pretty heavy on weighted push-ups. It's very useful and I do recommend getting one for yourself. But again, it would never be something like, oh, we're gonna take the bench press out of the program altogether and we're gonna do pec flies in its place, right? No, because that's just a silly notion. But now, now you guys kind of have a better idea of what I'm getting at here in terms of exercise variation. When I say exercise variation, what I really mean, it's more like rotating through different variations of big lifts, different permutations of the tried and true compound exercise. So you make a small change to the exercises with each training block or whatever, and that can have a profoundly positive impact on your overall training program and the results that you get from your training. And one of the prime primary reasons for this that literally no one ever talks about is that changing up the variation that you're using has a way of removing the ego from the equation. There's no baseline for you when you start using a new exercise variation. When, when you do a variation that you're familiar with or that you've done in very recent history, you already have a baseline set. You have a physical baseline and you have a mental baseline, right? And you're always going to compare everything that you do on that exercise against that mental baseline. But the thing is, most of you guys are lifting too heavy too frequently. I see this time and time again with people who come to me for training programs. We, we take a step back and we and we take three steps back and we end up taking seven steps forward, right? Because most of you guys are lifting too heavy or you're doing too many reps with percentages that are too high, uh, too high and too frequently. And so you keep redlining the engine over and over and over again because you're trying so desperately to keep up with what you think you should be able to do on a particular exercise because you trampoline 300 pounds off your sternum for a PR once or you half squatted four wheels or whatever. But the point is the ego gets in the way and that happens to the best of us. And changing something up, changing things up to something that's a little bit less familiar can help to at least take some of that ego out of the equation. And that can actually help you to make better progress in the long run because when you start training with weights that are more appropriate for you, Suddenly, progress has a way of skyrocketing. There's no other reason why I can take somebody who's been stuck deadlifting 300 pounds for the last two years, train them for six months with lighter weights than what they've been training with themselves, and then suddenly they can deadlift 400 pounds as if by black magic, right? But like I said, that is the mentality of taking, being willing to take two or three steps back, to take 
five or six steps forward. For me, that's a worthwhile trade-off every time. And that's a concept that's incredibly simple at its face, but that you eventually come to learn is actually ignored by most trainees. And really the only reason that I can think of is because of the ego. The ego gets in the way. And then you've got guys like Doucette screaming his mantra of harder than last time. And while I appreciate the sentiment there, it does leave a lot to be desired, especially amongst those who aren't really all that knowledgeable. And that's who Greg is really targeting. That's who's really hearing that mantra. But with that, you're going to end up with a lot of guys like this in my own comment section yesterday, basically saying something along the lines of, well, quote, paraphrase, I always want to go harder and I've been redlining the engine for five years straight. And now that I've been doing that, I can't figure out why my training isn't really going all that well anymore. Well, I have a few reasons, a few ideas as to why that may be. And so maybe the phrase should be train harder than last time, dot, 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 within reason. Not quite as catchy, I know, but a bit more honest and a bit more accurate. There's a concept in sport known as slicing the bologna thin, right? That is, as you gain experience, you generally have a relatively accurate idea of what you're capable of doing on any given day. You can typically guess pretty closely what you're capable of. And so when comp when you know your body, and so when competition rolls around, you build into that. You build into what you think you can do as the season goes along. So that way you culminate with your best work by the end of the season when it counts. You don't just go balls out on day one. And it's the same with the weights, right? I just did a triple with 355 pounds on the box front squat the other day. And I started using this exercise a few weeks ago and I went with just 315 pounds for the first time that I did it. Following week, I went to 325. Week after that, I did 335. Then I did 340, then 45, then 50, and then finally 355. And I'm still not at the top. I know that I can still go higher, but I'm taking my time. I'm cutting at it bit by bit, week by week, session by session. And these highly intense, but not all out efforts add up and they build strength little by little over time without beating me up, without ever beating me up so badly that I can't continue to perform week in and week out. That is harder than last time, dot, 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 within reason. And like I said, I did all this with a brand new and completely unfamiliar squat variation. I had literally never done a front squat onto a box before. And I had absolutely no idea what to expect when I started doing the exercise. I have front squatted without a box though. I have front squatted 430 pounds. So I have a reference point on that exercise. But when I added the box, the reference point was gone. And so with no reference point, the ego is gone. And 315, even though if I went to a regular front squat and did 315, I would tell you that that is embarrassing. On the box front squat, I'll tell you, that's perfectly adequate, right? For day one, that's perfectly fine. I don't even care. And that is only 73% of my personal best on the front squat. And then just this past week, I added another brand new variation into my training program, the bottoms up dip. Another movement that I've literally never tried before, right? So again, I had absolutely no idea what to expect, but I managed to hit a pretty solid single on day one with 150 pounds strapped to myself on the weighted bottoms up dip. Now, compare that exercise to this pretty easy standard dip that I did just a few weeks ago using 185 pounds, right? Same movement pattern, but one movement has an eccentric phase and the other one doesn't. And without the eccentric, we have substantially less weight on that movement. Now, and that's, that's really what I was going for with this variation here, just trying to get more out of less. And that way we still get a very high quality and highly intense effort. But again, there's no ego here. I have no expectation. There's no baseline. There's no reference point. And so I'm just tinkering with it. I'm just tinkering with the movement, building it up and feeling things out. And in the end, I end up getting a very, very high quality stimulus for my body to adapt to with less overall stress, both physical and psychological. So now I can throw this variation into the rotation for a little while. I can do it every single week for four or five or six weeks at a time or six or seven or eight weeks at a time, or I can rotate between regular dips and bottoms up dips for, I could do it probably for four or five months that way if I really wanted to, right? But after some time, it will go stale. Just like any other exercise, it will eventually go stale, but not before I've gotten all the 
new benefits that I can get from it. That would be adapting to a slightly different movement pattern, having to learn how to better utilize my strength with no eccentric phase and with the benefit of very little stretch reflex at the bottom of the movement, as well as the psychological reprieve that just comes from simply using less weight in an absolute sense. And so instead of just repeatedly bashing your head into the wall by refusing to incorporate any variety into your training, this is a, a problem now that I think is becoming more and more prolific with the popularity of powerlifting, of raw powerlifting growing, right? Instead of refusing to do that though, or if you're just stuck in a rut in general, maybe try something new. I think that your body will thank you for it, right? And in the long run, if you're open to the concept of experimenting and keeping things fresh, you're only gonna end up being more muscular, more well-rounded and more adaptable, and you'll probably also suffer from less overuse injuries as well. Now, before I close and before some smart Alec points out in the comments, I do wanna mention that there is such a thing as too much variation, right? Doing too many different kinds of exercises or changing exercises too frequently and never really getting the benefits of an exercise because of that or program hopping or whatever. We know a lot of people have program ADD and exercise ADD and all that. And so I could also very easily argue the exact other side of this equation, why you should incorporate less variation into your training, be a minimalist, yada, 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 all that. But in my opinion, it all ultimately really just comes down to execution. If you're incorporating stupid variations or too much isolation work or too much machine or cable work, and it usually in an attempt to escape actually having to work hard, or you're rotating things too frequently like I was just talking about, or if you're just a rank beginner with no experience, then yeah, this advice doesn't really apply here, and you would be better off just picking a handful of tried and true compound moves movements, working those exercises for a little while and getting good at them before you start trying to color outside of the lines. But if you're already in the intermediate or the advanced stages of your training and you want to become a truly well-rounded lifter and athlete and continue to make optimal progress in the long run while keeping yourself in the game in a pain-free state, then consider experimenting with some new exercise variations and continue to do so every few months, right? Tweak the grip that you're using, tweak the stance that you're using, add a box, add one or two pauses somewhere throughout the movement, use a different bar, remove the eccentric, whatever. There are a million different options and this creates a million different variations that you can use. And like I said, just start coloring outside the lines a little bit. And in the end, you'll take yourself farther that way and the whole process will actually become a lot more enjoyable as well and that's very important too anyway that's all i got for today guys i hope you enjoyed the video and as always i hope that you were able to take something useful away from it please remember to smash the like button before you go leave me some love in the comments subscribe to my channel all that jazz and if you're interested in online coaching or training programs be sure to visit my website www.oncareelitefitness.com for more details keep training hard and i will catch you guys next time <music>